Are you impressed by the way the Knicks stood up to LeBron? This is funny here. I thought when Phil Jackson left, the beef with the Knicks would end. But no, last night it was rejuvenated. LeBron James and the Knicks. He said that Dennis Smith should have been drafted earlier. That didn't go so well with this guy right here, Frankie Smokes. He keeps pushing LeBron, and LeBron's not moving. And then Ennis Cantor, there's some mouthiness right there. Oh, yes. Nobody came rushing here to the defense too quickly of our man LeBron there, Dominique. Yeah, I mean, I'm not proud of the Knicks for standing up. They lost the pregame trash talk. They lost the actual game. They lost the postgame trash trash talk. And Ennis Cantor also lost the face-to-face -face game of chess chicken that you play. You never look away. You got to break down the film. You look away, you lose. Let's check in with some of that video he was talking about. Here's Cantor after the game losing the postgame, too. I'll, I'll tell you one thing, this team is really special. And you didn't come to my house playing that water bottle flip game again. You know what I mean? Uh, I don't care who you are, King, what, what do you call yourself, King, Queen, Princess, whatever you are. You know what, we're going to fight. And, and nobody out there going to punk us. So we're just going out there, play our game, and I think we're just going to get better, and better, better every day. But you didn't fight. No. You chest bumped and looked away. You got scared. Everyone knows that the image you're trying to convey at that chest bump situation is I don't care. I don't give a bleep. Now he here's LeBron bleep. though. Here's LeBron winning the post game. Well, I'm the king. My wife is the queen and my daughter is the princess. So we got all three covered. Just such effortless, casual trash talk, just like the step back three that he hit to put the dagger in that game. Yeah. LeBron wins. He always wins. The Panthers are seven and three, but are they good? This is a question you can ask about so many teams in the NFL. The Titans are six and three. They've been outscored this season. I like to look at point differential more than I like to look at records. And even with that blowout victory yesterday, Carolina is still with Dallas and Detroit in terms of point differential. They're kind of like Dallas and Detroit. If you think those teams are good, then you think Carolina is good. Yeah, they're definitely good, but we're a bit afflicted by the primetime game syndrome. Dallas and Detroit, if you think those teams are good, then you think Carolina is good. Yeah, they're definitely good, but we're a bit afflicted by the primetime game syndrome. When you blow out a bad team on primetime, all of a sudden we think we're, you're really good. But you're playing the Dolphins. But they always have a chance with that defense and Cam Newton on offense. The sad thing is that front office has failed Cam Newton. If they need to get him a receiver, why don't they draft him a receiver instead of converting Devin Funches over from tight end to receiver or bringing in Samuels, who was a college running back slash guy, making him a receiver or throwing out hola, hola, hola. who was in college. He was like a slash quarterback slash receiver. Draft that man a receiver and take some of the weight off of his back. The Miami Dolphins are four and five. They're a legitimate playoff contender, even though, as he said, they're a bad team. They've been outscored by 87 points this season. They're basically the 49ers at four and five. Is Jerry Jones helping or hurting the NFL by continuing his fight? This is crazy. This story, you haven't seen anything quite like it, even as Al Davis feuded with the NFL. Not something like this, where you've got a feud with the commissioner of the league and the most powerful owner in the sport, and I don't think he much cares whether he's helping or hurting the NFL. This is about whether it helps Jerry Jones. This is a petty squabble about what it is that Jerry Jones wants as he wrestles for power, and I can't believe that he's okay with the optics of this one, Dominic. You didn't care when Ray Rice was doing that in an elevator. Goodell was fine with job status back then, even as ever Everyone at this network was calling for his firing, but when he takes your running back from you, that's when you care enough to block it. That he doesn't care about that shows you how little he cares about how any of this looks. Oh yeah, Jerry Jones is the one who's certainly not going to lose in this. He's super comfortable in the mud. He's now dragging the rest of the owners down into mud, also in the entire league, but it doesn't matter because you took Jerry's running back and he's not standing for that. One thing that I also find super interesting is they think that they're going to intimidate Jerry Jones. like. He's not only a billionaire, but he's 75. When my grandmother turned 70, she said and did whatever she wanted. So what if you gave her a billion extra dollars? He doesn't care about whether or not this gets dirty. He was already caught with his pants down literally yeah. in the bathroom. And what did he do about that? He just sort of shrugged and said, bring whatever you got. Did he hide? No. Nope. <laughs> did he apologize? No. no. He continued being Jerry Jones. So your little cease, cease and desist warning, ha, ha. You know, when you get to be as old as I am, 70-some years old, you get a lot of free time. You don't spend that much time in the bedroom, you know?
So you got to you got to move around. You got to find other fights. things to do. You got to pick you know, fights with the right. commissioner of the league. Because because that's right. You got to find other things to do. Things aren't happening in the bedroom. What an odd source of this controversy. Oh, wow, the scandal starts in the bedroom. I don't think you know Jerry Jones very well. Too much information. Is that what it is? <laughs> well, I think your life is a little different than Jerry Jones's life in that department. I'm just guessing. Pretty sure he's good on nocturnal meanderings. <laughs> he is doing just fine. I think so. Is Rudy Gobert right that Dion Waiters made a dirty play? Gobert is out for at least a month. Now let's watch the play. It's from Friday, and he thought immediately. He said immediately it was a dirty play, play because that hurt right there, and it's at least a month out. They're a different team when Gobert's not out there. Uh, Dion Waiters said, "Hey, that wasn't intentional. Get up out of." Uh, out of your feelings and then Gobert comes back hey it's not my feelings it's my knee it's my knee I'm out for a month and so did it look like a dirty play to you because it didn't look like it had intent to me dumb no that was clean that's a legal chop block so it's impossible to tell a player's intent I know that Dion Waiters is kind of a fiery guy but in the past when he got into altercations he elbowed guys in the back of the head that's JJ Redick so I don't think that he's the type of guy to do this subtle fake slip fake dive into the leg type of thing it looked like a legal play to me I don't think that there's anything wrong with that you do understand though why somebody would make that personal when it's their knees it's their livelihood you might get up in your feelings if it was your knees that wasn't daddy i'll show you something real daddy oh oh that's it that was dirty that's right that was wow. daddy <laughs> you're just gonna take that that hurt that legitimately hurt like he wasn't that? faking that he put his weight behind it you're not a kid anymore dan you don't Damn. have to take that Cavs, Hornets at 8, Sixers, Lakers at 10.30, tomorrow on ESPN. Joining us on the beach today, Cameron. Uh, his new mixtape, the program, is out now and his tour begins Wednesday at Live here on Miami Beach. Part one of our interview. Give us something that you're really proud of, like the thing that you're proudest of, whether it's something that you overcame or just something about you where you summoned a strength that you didn't know you had. It isn't one particular scenario I'm most proud of, but just moving my mother out the ghetto, that's one of my best achievements. But even like going to college, I didn't graduate high school, but still ended up getting in college. You know what I'm saying? I never even graduated. I went to junior college and... uh Basically, almost got handed my GED. I took the test and everything, but, you know, basically, I used to cheat and manipulate the system so much. So for me to be a successful businessman at the age of 40, I'm proud about that. But you know what, Dan? Let me, let, let's do this. Because you know what? You get all these guests up here, right? And none of them really know about sports. I know about sports. How do you feel about Floyd Mayweather? Um, in general, he's the, I mean, he's the best defensive boxer I've ever seen and pound for pound as good as anyone. Are you talking about his personality or his boxing style? Just Floyd Mayweather, period. How you feel about him? Let's we'll say a couple oh, of I like, topics. I like his style, but I like guys who uh, sell arrogant jerk. I'm unusual that way. Like, he sells yeah. arrogance very well. But you know what? Nobody gives Floyd a round of applause. I'm going to give Floyd a round of applause, man. And everybody's like, oh, he's a defensive fighter, like you just said. The name of the sport is boxing. A lot of people are like, oh, he doesn't get into... The name of the sport is not you hit me and I hit you. Right. I knock you out, you knock me out. Right. He's a good, he's the best boxer, period. Let's not say defensive boxer. All right, All right. well, hold on a second, though. Let me, just real quick, and I'm happy to argue with you about this. Would you prefer to do that interview? Because I'm happy to do a sports yeah, interview. I want, I want to, uh, yeah, I'm happy to do that. You want to talk about sports? All yes, right, you want to do yes. that? I know, okay, but I know about sports. I know sports. Okay, but that's not aesthetically pleasing, though, watching that kind of fight. He's an excellent businessman, and he's also excellent at getting his face not hit in a violent sport. He deserves credit for that. No, because you know why? You're talking about money may. Go back to Pretty Boy Floyd when he was in gruesome fights, when he had over a 50% knockout rate. What he did was fight Oscar De La Hoya, realized that Oscar De La Hoya was a Mexican-American, and bringing in all them pay-per-view numbers. And so he started to change his fight game. You wouldn't say that when he fought a Toro Gotti, would you? Was he a no. defensive fighter when he fought a Toro Gotti? No, but no, I'm talking wasn't. about this this decade, I haven't seen him knock anybody out. I haven't course, seen him no, in... Okay, let, let me do. Let me ask you this question. When, who, what, did he, what did he make more money doing? Knock, when he was knocking people out or being smart and being defensive? What, what part of the pretty boy no. Floyd or money made? What makes more money? 
Yes, great businessman. Yes, but not aesthetically pleasing to watch those fights. You watch those fights and get disappointed by those fights. But but let me tell you something about that. Floyd knows that. And everybody who goes to see him, not everybody because I'm a fan, the majority of people go to see him because he knows they come to see him lose. And you can't do nothing about it. Oscar De La Hoya throws shots all the time at Floyd Mayweather. Oscar De La Hoya, and no disrespect to Oscar De La Hoya, you had a drug problem. You let Richard Schaefer and uh, to a lesser degree, but not Hopkins run your company. You came back to Char Run Golden Boy. All your fighters was gone. You get mad at Al Heyman and Floyd because the majority of those fighters went over to Al Heyman's company, and then you get an attitude with Floyd. Stop crying, Oscar De La Hoya, please. Because when he fought Conor McGregor, oh, if he would have fought uh, Canelo, it would have been a better situation. It would have been much better. That's all you got is Canelo. You made the Triple G fight. It took you like three three years to do that fight. Oscar, right, stop on. crying. You are a businessman, so let's negotiate this. I ask one of my kind of questions, <laughs> and then I will ask the kind of question that you want about sports. So you allow me one of my questions, and then we'll do... No, I want to do this with let's you. Go. I want to do yeah, this with go. you. Let's go, no problem. All right, which is your favorite rap beef? This is one of my questions. Which Among your rap beefs, which is the one that you like the best? Probably Jay-Z and Nas. Jay-Z and Nas is probably my favorite rap beef because... Nas was kind of quiet in, for a while. For a couple years, Nas was kind of quiet, and Jay-Z was elevating that particular time. And um, everybody thought Nas was out, and Jay-Z had did a diss record towards Nas. I don't know why, what it was about, but he did a diss record. I know what it was about, but I don't know the reason for him doing it. He did a diss record towards Nas, and everybody's like, Nas is really gone. And then Nas came out the blue with a song called Ether, and it was like, wow, Nas is not gone. And... Now it's kind of, you know, people have different opinions on who won that battle, but that was probably the best battle I've seen because it was really intense. It was all based out of New York. And Do you have an opinion? Who won it? Who won the battle? Pick one, and then I'll ask one of your kind of questions. Pick one of the guy. I'll trade you. What, give me who you thought won, and then I'll move it on to one of your kind of questions. It's two, it's two answers to that question. Lyrically, when Nas came out with Ether, I believe he won the battle. Even though the takeover was incredible, what Jay Z did, but I believe Don's won the battle and Jay Z won the war. No, and this is no disrespect to either one of these guys because I have no problem with these guys now because I had past previous beef with these guys and I have no beef with them now. I'm just giving giving my opinion, but Nas won the battle lyrically, but then he ended up signing Jay Z ended up signing Nas to Def Jam. So on the business tip, <laughs> right, to me, right. Jay-Z won overall because he's like, okay, you beat me lyrically, but I'll sign you over here. So that's my opinion. What do you say when you turn on ESPN and you see a gas bag saying that Kevin Durant is soft for taking a shortcut and joining the Golden State Warriors? I have a problem with that. I have a real problem with that. Because, Kevin, first of all, Kevin Durant's a good friend of mine. That's first and foremost. And second of all, the reason I have a problem with that is this. I respect people like... Carmelo Anthony, LeBron James, even though Kobe Bryant, even though he's retired, for putting these no trade clauses in their contract. They're smart. You know, you have a uh, analyst up here that does basketball, Tim Legler. I was watching him one night, and, you know, he said he was on a boat. When I be- I'm not sure, don't quote me, but it's Golden State Warriors on their, their, their ticket holder's boat ride. And during the boat ride, he found out he got traded. These players are controlling their own destiny as to other players when they get, they'll wake up in the morning, sleep in Miami, and by the afternoon they have to be in Milwaukee. So Kevin Durant is controlling his own destiny. Some people have a problem with that because they're saying it's not a competitive, competitive that he went to Golden State. But if that's what's going to make him happy and make his family happy and he still get paid and his endorsements are still the same, I have no problem with that. Coming up tomorrow in part two of our Cameron interview. All the girls see the boy. Look at his kicks. Boy. Look at his car. Boy. All I say is, oh boy. Look, mommy, I'm no good. I'm so hood. Clap at your soul, you're sober. Then leave after it's sober. From the Clevelander Hotel on beautiful South Beach, Miami. Time to play the game that uses dance toothbrush. Do you question? You give us topics and events, we question them. Do you question if this play is a net positive for the defense? Okay, let's see who we've got on defense. We've got Navy and Pitt in college basketball. Who's on defense here? Let's see what we've got. Tremendous sound by Pitt on defense. Oh, toss him up. And 
Oh. Oh. That may have raised the roof a little bit. Of yeah, can't can't say anything bad about our first. Oh. Missed by Abdullah. You cannot oh, say anything oh, bad, about the bad about the truth. Let's just focus on the positive. You know what a crossover. Yes. Anything that happens after this did not happen. Right. Okay. Thank you for your service, sir. Oh, th <laughs> thank you for your service. What was the question again? A net positive for the defense. Yes, it's positive for the defense is the answer. If I must answer the question, that's a positive for the defense. They got a stop, they got an air ball, they got some shame, and then they got the end one when they got the ball. It is not a positive. The shame ruins everything. Who cares about the air ball? That shame will be remembered forever. That was bad. Well, that's have seen worse. Give it to him, Poppy. Look out! Oh, we're going. Oh, yes. Oh, air ball. Yes. Oh! oh. oh. <laughs> Oh, uh, uh, oh, such a good move right in the air. Ouch. Not while like the he young had him lady burned. He had all the game. He was and then, showing out. Where was oh. the hoop? Where was the ball? What's going on? No. <laughs> Do you question if this bear was aiming? I've done this show for six years waiting for this question. <laughs> I've been waiting for this moment. What do you mean this bear was aiming? What do you mean? <laughs> There's a bear in a tree. I've gone so far. Is he going to throw something at this camera? Is that what's going to happen? Oh, no. Oh, that is called yeah. defecation. Yes. <laughs> there it is. I got something for you from way up here. Didn't we see this clip yesterday when John Fox was challenging a player? Like, this is the same thing. John Fox <laughs> Let's go is a bear on top of a tree. Let's go to the play. instant replay of John Fox this season. Oh, and there's the Bears fans with poop all over them after John Fox challenges a play. Oh, ruined his hat. But they're hunters, right? So, I mean, no, we have no, no sympathy. You don't that. get used to a bear feces. No, 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 no I'm not saying you get used to it. I'm not. saying I feel no sympathy for you. Like the bear catches a bullet, you okay. catch a little poop on your brain. Okay. Oh, right, well. There you go. He sides with the bear. Always. I just feel bad for that bear, you know? He had to go all the way to the top of the tree to get some privacy, you know. <laughs> he couldn't concentrate himself that's down there with all the people point. around him. You know what I mean? That's not right, you know. I mean, you get that's right, he's, poor bear. You know what I mean? That's so pretty right bad, you know. That's Why right. Getting in the way. That's you, right. You made him go up the tree, and now you blame him for pooping from up in that's the tree. Right. You made it because look at all that noise that was downstairs. He couldn't poop down there. <laughs> Time to play the game that smells like barbecue sauce. See? Oh no. Tell us what's on television tonight. We'll tell you if we're intrigued or not. Tonight on ESPN, the State Farm Champions Classic. Oh yeah, this is good. Four of the top ten will be playing against each other tonight. Let's check in with Coach Calipari. He's sitting here out of practice telling his young team they gotta get back to basics. That way. <laughs> Good. This is where we are. Last one. All right, look. I'm that one. Back. That way, back. Hello, sir. Hello. Hello, sir. Creepy man in the left-hand corner. Uh, also, that's a good way to win, but a better way to win is get all the pro players. Go ahead and do that. Uh, Dominique, are you intrigued? See, I'm very intrigued. I love Coach Cal because he's the picture of college basketball integrity. When the whole world is coming down around him, you know who's doing it right? That guy teaching good fundamental basketballs. Bob. That way. Papi, are you intrigued? Oh, see, see, I'm very intrigued. Listen, is that all it takes to be a great basketball coach? <laughs> Move a little bit to yeah. the right. Move, Move a little bit to the left. Move a little bit to the right. Move a little bit to the left. That's the highest paid guy in the that's sport. Right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He keeps a suitcase full of cash. <laughs> Move a little bit to the left. Move a little bit to the left. Here's a suitcase full of cash. Move a little bit to the left. That's not true. We don't know if it comes in suitcases or not. Papi, you're always apologizing to Kentucky on the show. Go ahead, apologize again, please. Yes, I have to apologize to the University of Kentucky because I don't really know uh, whether that, that suitcase was full of cash or whether it was full of uh, gold, maybe silver, <laughs> maybe half of it, you know. With maybe, that. It wasn't full. That's right. maybe, maybe it wasn't full. Maybe, maybe it wasn't full. full. Maybe it wasn't full. You know, maybe it was three quarter of it full. You know, that's you know. It also could be a bag. It may not be. It could be a duffel bag. It may not a be a suitcase. Bag. On ESPN2, NFL Live. 
Uh, no, thank you. But last night during Monday Night Football or before Monday Night Football, uh, Woodson and Charles Woodson and Hasselbeck got together and they did the one chip challenge. We got to do that around here with my dad, don't we? That would be funny. Let's look. It's the hottest chip and you can't, your face goes and contorts and stuff. Go, one, two, three. Let's roll. Well, you got to have some of it get in your mouth. <laughs> nothing. Is there going to be a delayed reaction? There's nothing to you, right? No nothing. way. <laughs> so you want me to do another one? Yeah, go ahead, boy. Because you, your counterpart to your right over here. One more. Two times. <laughs> Get him, see hey, Wood. Hey, Randy J. Really? He's going to bury him? That ain't nothing to me. <laughs> Get a whole bag of things. It's a DB. Corners are scanning those damn chips. Go for some of the red. Pull it down. Look at us. He's a quarterback. He's a quarterback. He's nothing but a tall kicker. Talking trash. Bopper, are you intrigued? Oh, see, see, I'm very intrigued. You said that once and never got burned, eh? What? Well, I know if I want defensive back who really got burned. Yes, show That's it. That's right. Show it. Put it on the screen. Hit him with it, Bobby. Bang. Look at that, Michael Turner. You run, big man. Run through that poor tackle. <laughs> That's all the time we have for today. Thank you for watching. I'll talk to you tomorrow. See you mañana. Oh, man, jealousy is so sad. I rest atop this kingdom, and you guys just snipe from the floor. It's awful. <laughs> Embarrassing. Waiting for me to defecate so you can sort through my excrement for morsels of nourishment. <laughs>